Hello cybersecurity professionals, welcome to AV Cyberactive. Today we're going to study EDR, also sometimes called as ETDR. Starting with the abbreviation first. So EDR stands for Endpoint Detection and Response or ETDR stands for Endpoint Threat Detection and Response. Now, the textbook definition for EDR would be something like Endpoint Detection and Response, or EDR, is software designed to automatically protect an organization's end users, endpoint devices, and IT assets against cyber threats that gets past AV or antivirus software and other traditional endpoint security tools, which means it does more than your basic antivirus can do which is going beyond basic signature-based scanning and detection. What it also means that EDR collects data continuously from all endpoints on your network, desktop, laptop, computers, servers, mobile devices, IoT, Internet of Things devices, and many more. It analyzes this data in real time for evidence of known or suspected cyber threats and can respond automatically to prevent or minimize damage from threat it identifies. Now, how does an EDR work? Well, there are differences among vendors. EDR solutions typically combine five core capabilities. That is continuous endpoint data collection, real-time threat analysis and threat detection, automated response, threat isolation and remediation, and support for threat hunting, which is most important feature of EDR. Let's study them one by one. First one, that is real-time analysis and threat detection. Although EDR uses advanced analytics and machine learning algorithms to identify patterns indicating known threats or suspicious activity in real time as they unfold. In general, EDR looks for two types of indicators, IOCs and IOAs. Check out this video to get more information on IOCs and IOAs. Now, to identify these indicators, EDR correlates its own endpoint data in real time with the data from threat intelligence sources, which deliver continuously updated information on new or recent cyber threats. These threat intelligence services can be proprietary, third party, or community based. And also, in addition, many EDR solutions also map data to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, a freely accessible global knowledge base of hackers, cyber threat tactics and techniques to which US government contribute. Typically, you will also find that many organizations integrate EDR with their SIEM solutions, that is security information and event management. I've made a separate video on how the SIEM and its architecture works. Do check out that video as well. Now, many organizations integrate EDR with SIM, which gathers security-related threats across all layers of IT infrastructure. Continuous Endpoint Data Collection EDR continuously collects data and data on processes, performance, config changes, network communications, file and data downloads or transfers, uh, end users and device behaviors as well. The data is then stored in a central database or data lake typically hosted in the cloud. Most EDR solutions collect this data by installing a very lightweight data collection tool or an agent on every endpoint device. Some may even rely instead of on capabilities in endpoint operating system as well. Automated Threat response. Automation is what puts the response, really the rapid response in EDR based on predefined rules set by the security team or that they have learned over time. EDR solution can do a lot of improvements through your security posture. Some of them I'll go ahead and list down here. You can pause the video and go through that list. And of course, EDR can automate threat investigation and remediation activities. It can be integrated with your SOAR, which is security orchestration and automation response solution systems to automate security response playbooks that involve other security tools. And all this automation helps security team respond to incidents and threats faster to prevent or minimize the damage 
they can do to the network. It helps security teams work as efficiently as possible with the staff that they have on hand. Investigation and remediation. Once a threat is isolated, EDR provides capabilities that security analysts can use to further investigate the threat. For example, forensic analysts help security analysts pinpoint the root cause of the threat, identify the various files it impacted, and identify the vulnerability or the attacker exploited to enter and move around the network and gain access to authentication credentials. Armed with this information, analysts can use remediation tools to eliminate the threat. Remediation steps might involve the following, which is destroying malicious files and wiping them off of the endpoints, restoring damaged configurations, registry settings, data and application files, applying updates to patches to eliminate vulnerabilities, updating detection rules to prevent reoccurrence. Last one and probably the most important one for an EDR solution that is support for threat hunting. Threat hunting, or also known as cyber threat hunting, is a proactive security exercise which is done by a security analyst who searches the network for unknown threats or known threats yet to be detected. Effective and timely threat hunting can reduce the time it takes to detect and remediate these threats and limit or prevent damage from the attack. Uh, threat hunters use a variety of tactics and techniques, most of which rely on the same data sources. For example, for threat hunting, analyze my might want to search for a particular file or config change based on the forensic analytics or based on the mitre attack framework. You might want to check out this video that I've made that describes the different SIEM use cases and explains MITRE ATT&CK very briefly over there. Now you must be thinking EDR does a lot of stuff, but how does it differentiate between a regular AV antivirus program and EDR? Let's go ahead and lay it out on a table here so we can understand the difference between them. Starting with the first one. EDR solution includes real-time monitoring and detection of threats. EDR is a behavior-based, remember that it's a behavior-based so that it can detect unknown threats based on anomalous behavior. But for antivirus, it's just a signature-based so it recognizes threats that are known. Next. EDR does data collection and analysis that determines patterns and alerts to the organizations to unknown threats. On the other side, antivirus can include scheduled or regular scanning of protected devices to detect only the known threats. EDR can isolate and quarantine suspicious infected items or machines. It often uses sandboxing to ensure a file's safety without disrupting the user's system. For antivirus, it just assists in removal of more basic viruses like worms, trojans, malware, adware, and spyware. EDR can include automated remediation or removal of certain threats. Antivirus, well, unfortunately, it just gives warning about possibly malicious websites only. EDR, the most important characteristic is it does for have forensic capabilities and can assist in determining what has happened during and security events by linking all the chains. Antivirus, unfortunately, no such capability. Now this is just a brief introduction what an EDR is, what an EDR can do, and how it differentiates between an antivirus. I'll link some useful websites down in the description so we can explore more and enhance your knowledge domain. And in case if you're interested in cybersecurity training or any kind of consultation, you can contact me at the email given down below. All right, so that was EDR and how it works. Do check out my other videos. And at the very least, share this video with your family and friends whom you would think would benefit by watching this. Please post your comments as that would help me motivate it to make similar videos in the future. Okay, with that I'll end the video. I hope you have a great day ahead. Bye now.